Hey everybody. So today we're going to be working with a Dell Optiplex 7040 mini tower. Um, I saw a couple of videos online that people were trying to get the strongest and best video card possible. Um, but obviously the limitations were with the power supply unit and how that it only came with, there it is right here, how it only comes with a as you can see over here, 240 watt power supply, which is not powerful enough if you want to install something wild and crazy like this, such as a GeForce GTX 1660Ti with the required 8 pin power connector right there. Now this is this guy's got two fans, not three, so this is a little smaller. And it does have that connector right there. And then we've got three different types of connectors here. It's display port, HDMI, and DVI. So I'm gonna show you how you can get that card working in this Optiplex 7040. Um, as you can see, I purchased here a Corsair SF600. Uh, I'll put the links in the comments shortly on um, where you can get this. Obviously, Amazon or different websites. This is the unit right here, this SF600, which shockingly was very, very small compared to the existing power supply in there. You'll notice it's modular, so you can put all different kinds of connections in here. Here is the existing power supply, which I just took out of the tower. This has a four pin connector on the motherboard for the CPU specifically. And then it has an eight pin, which supplies regular power to the motherboard. So I'm gonna spin these around here. You can just see the drastic difference in size. Between the two units so you might say well that's a little bit taller it's not gonna fit but actually it does fit you just have to get creative on securing it that's the other side that's this side so obviously it would sit something like that I'll also put the dimensions of both units in the comments so you guys can compare them I picked this up on Amazon. It was a little overpriced. I think I paid about 200 and something dollars for it. And let's go ahead and get started over here. Get that out of the way. While you're opening your case, make sure you Disconnect any USB antennas you have in here. I already broke two of them, leaving them in here and popping this cover off and whoosh, cracks it right there. So you gotta be careful with that, especially when you slide this forward because it you'll notice it totally separates from the USB ports. So let's get this open. As you can see, I already took out the three screws right here. There's one right here. One right here and one right here. So I was saying you guys are gonna have to get creative on securing the unit. I haven't gotten that far yet. I was just excited to get it plugged in and see it turn on. So the four pin over here for the CPU, that guy is right over here. So we got one for him and that was kinda stranded along here in between these connectors, holding them in brackets and then the other one the 8 pin sits right over here that's the 8 pin and also since we're going to be using the power from this new power unit we will also disconnect this wire here which is supplying power to the SATA right up here I have an SSD in there so this is gonna get replaced. And I also have a memory card reader here. So that's gonna get replaced too. So we can go ahead and take these out here. Put the 
this cable out. And we've got this cable out. Okay, let's get that over there. Now, the unit, I would say, power unit, you want to get the wires set up first before you get them in there. It's a little bit easier to deal with. Um, one other thing you will have to purchase, since you notice here, this is a 24 pin, and obviously our motherboards are only an eight and a four. You will need to purchase separately a 24 pin to eight pin. And I'll put that in the links too, uh, where to purchase that separately. That's not expensive. That's I think like 10 bucks on Prime. So let's scoot back here a little bit so we can see what we're dealing with. Okay, so we have the, and this, the, all these black cables here, this one, we have this one, two, and three. There's also a fourth one, which we're not going to use right now. We're going to be using these three. First one's the 24 pin, and then it converts out to this connector and this connector. And now the 24 pin is what's going to connect into the converter cable, like this. And these two get connected to the power unit. So we can do that now. So you'll notice there is a push-up tab here. That's going to go where the holes are up top. So we're going to go ahead, put this one in here. Make sure it's secured. See that's not secured right now. Space in between. Connections are good. That one's still not in all the way. There you go. That's in good now. You can see there's no space in between. And then this one connects like that. That one snapped in nicely, as you can see here. So now we have our 24 pin plugged in. And then we're going to connect this straight end of the 24 pin into the converter. Now notice the converter has a little tab right here. The tab will go with that push pin right there. I have to put the phone down for a second to get these to plug in, so hang on. I'm working on, working on the floor here. Okay, so that's in like so, it's snapped in. And now you'll notice we're converting from a 24 pin to what we need, eight pins. So that's gonna go right here on the motherboard. Right on this white slot right there. So now the other requirement we need is the four pin CPU. So we have that as well. Let's go and grab that one. The cables are nice from Corsair because they're labeled. So you'll notice here, this one says it's a type four, nothing on the other side. But on this side, as you can see, it's split. You can do either the two together is eight, or if you just need four, which is what we need, You'll see on the other side it says CPU. So that's going to go on the motherboard for the CPU connection. And this end, we're going to plug it in right over here where it says, spin this around, right over here where it says uh, 6x2 PCIe, which we're going to use that later for the video card, and 4x4 CPU. So we're going to plug in that right in here. And it can be any one of these three. It doesn't specifically have to be the one I'm plugging into. We're gonna get that plugged in, that one's in. And let's see what else we need here. Now let's get the plug for the video card. So we're gonna use this one, which is a nice eight pin here. It says 
Type 4 on it. We'll plug that one in. And you'll notice on the other side of it, it says PCIe, which is what our video card is. It's a PCIe video card. But this is only a six pin. So we need this six pin and we're gonna need this two pin. These go together and snap into the video card. We're also gonna need this other one that they sent, which is gonna plug in to the peripherals and SATA, which is gonna power our SATA devices. Get that snapped in nice, and you can see they provide one, two, three, four connections for SATA. Now, it's a pretty good length, but it might not be enough depending on how many connections um, you guys are using. I've noticed some people using a couple of hard drives, or uh, you can do the optional CD drive in here, a larger three and a half inch CD drive. In that case, you can contact Corsair and purchase another one of these. You're not limited to just the four. I would say purchase another one of these, plug it into this slot. That way, at least it's dedicated power as opposed to buying a splitter and splitting this out. That wouldn't be very safe. The last thing they provide us, which I won't be needing, but maybe you guys will be, is another six pin here. And this six pin would plug in here and it provides the older power connectors for the older hard drives, as you can see the four circles. And they provide us three on that, like that. I won't be needing that because I don't have any old, anything older to plug in. Um, and they also provide another eight pin, which would come in down here on this spot, which would give you another PCIe. So if you wanted to do another graphics card or any kind of add-in PCIe card, that would also need separate power. They also provide that, which I won't be needing because I'm just doing one video card. Right, hang on, just get some light on in here. Like I said, don't mind the mess. I'm just excited to get this set up here. Okay, get that there. So first I'm going to from the converter cable, the eight pin. I'm gonna get that plugged in, match up the push pin right here. Here's the push pin. Match that up to the notch on this side. So the push pin's gonna to go to the right. That snaps in nice. Now the way I'm doing it is, which I think everyone should, you should put it with the SF 600 facing down. It's going to be tough with one hand here holding the phone. So we're going to get that in there nice like that because with, with all the wording facing up, because you notice the fan is right here. So you don't want the fan facing back here. You want it to be able to breathe. Now, you'll notice here it doesn't exactly fit, which we knew. So what I had to do was move this over. This right here was facing up and I just took a back of a screwdriver and I pushed it down like this because see how this one's standing up. Let me get a better angle. So this one's standing up. It was a rail that the old power supply would sit in and, and let it slide in. So that rail is fine. This rail wasn't, so I went and pushed this one down. So that way when we sit this in here, at the very least, we have that bottom middle screw right here. So this bottom middle screw is going to match up here just fine, more or less. And there's also two others. There's one over here. And there's one over here on the bottom. And then also the top, there are three. But they're very high, they're all the way up here. So you're gonna have to get some sheet metal screws to 
drill through the sheet metal, sorry, drill through the sheet metal in order to get this really secure. The other one small disadvantage is you're going to have a power switch on and off as opposed to your older power supply, which did not, it just ran from the power button. But small price to pay to get, as you can see, a 600 watt power supply in here that will power your video card. So once we get this set up, again, sorry guys, I only got one hand here holding the phone. I'll give you guys a example of what's going on here. So we got that set up. I'm not gonna connect the hard drive right now. I'm just gonna leave that out. Okay, so this one is the CPU. Let's do that. I'm just gonna hook these up rough. I'm not gonna plug anything in fancy because I wanna show you guys how this works. This does turn on. Okay, so this is the PCIe. This is gonna be the video card in a minute. This does work. And of course, I'll provide an update in the coming days and weeks to let you guys know this computer is going to be on every day for at least a week. Make sure nothing burns out or blows up. I don't want anyone's computer blowing up. Okay, so we're ready. This one is extra. And over here, like that. All right, so all we have left is the cable for the video card, which is this PCIe we have right here. You can kind of see that it says PCIe on the connector. So we're gonna take our video card. Luckily, the plug is on the top, so I can plug this in. Uh, I'm gonna be plugging it into that blue slot up the top there. So it's blue on top, white in the middle, and then there's a grayish black color on the bottom. So I did knock out the two um, spacers there, right here. You don't need two slots for this. This card's pretty, pretty legit, pretty thick. So we're gonna get him in there. Whoop! Forgot to open up the release. So let's get the release open. We're gonna get this here. You gotta kind of watch out the SATA cables over there. Listen for the click. All right. So we've got the video card in there. That's secure. That's secure. And let's get this guy some power. All right. So we've got our PCIe. Okay, so we've got two two of them for this. It's going to be the six. Let's see if that gets clear. Hold on for you. It's going to be the six and the two. So you'll see the little clip here. That's going to be where the push button's going to be. The little push release. That's going to go in like this, and it goes all the way over like that. I won't push it in yet. So it goes all the way over here. And you'll see the PCIe is on the outside. Can't really see, there you go. Can't really see too good. PCIe on the outside. I'm gonna put that in like that. And then this one goes right along with it. And you'll notice, you can't really see too good on, on, the, on the film here. The bottom, which is here, this one is kind of oval. This one up here is square. So we can get a better angle for you. And we also have the same thing on our cable. Camera's not too good. So that is curved and square. So that's gonna go right in there too. Matches up. I got them both together. They have little little notches on them that you can't really see. And then that just goes right in. And secure it. And there you go. You've got your 
six pin and two supplying power to a 1660 Ti. And that's in. Well, just confirming we have our CPU, four pin plugged in, we have our power converter plugged in here. We've got the six and two plugged in here. Uh, let's get, we've got a HDMI, let's get the HDMI. As you can see, we're gonna plug right in to the 1660 Ti. That's in. I'm plug in some power. Make sure the switch is off too. Some of these power supplies come with the power switch in the on position. So we're gonna plug that in. And you guys can take a look here. We're gonna have the Power supply in, I've got HDMI plugged directly into the 1660 Ti, and now we're ready to turn this guy on. Pull that up over here, I'm gonna turn this switch. You'll notice the fans on the 1660 Ti turn on, the CPU fan turns on, everything is on. We're gonna go over to the screen now, and you guys will notice it has turned on. So we have power to the motherboard. Get the keyboard here. keyboard here. We have power to the motherboard. And we also have power to the video card. There's no error message saying uh, insufficient power. You'll notice obviously uh, the hard drive error because I don't have a hard drive plugged in. So if we go to the setup utility. And you can see here that this is in fact an Optiplex 7040. Uh, I've got 16 gigs of RAM in here. The VGA card was detected in slot two. And if I go over here to video, primary display, you see the NVIDIA HD graphics did load up. So it is recognizing it, it is providing power. And this unit does work. I'll provide uh, some more videos shortly after this. Showing this guy in action. All right, guys, uh, submit your comments, questions. You guys want to see any other videos of this or slow down the process or, you know, in any different ways you want with cabling or whatever. And uh, I'll be happy to help. Hope this was uh, helpful to you guys. Um, maxing out your uh, Optiplex 7040.